Hello YouTubers, welcome again to my channel. Today I'm bringing you part four of my FE examination preparation program, Mouthful. But it's actually going to be talking about the FE reference manual. This is the manual that's freely available from the NCEES website and that will be provided to you on the screen while you're taking the online test. So I hope you learned something. But first, review the agenda. We're now covering the actual fifth video, which is part four. We're going to cover the NCES FE Reference Handbook. Okay, let's start with a review of the examination that we gave at the end of the last video. Question number one. You can opt out of the NCES agreement at the start of the FE exam true or false? The correct answer is false. If you choose to opt out of that agreement, you'll be asked to immediately leave the room and you'll be forfeiting your fees for that exam. Question number two. How many minutes will you be given for each half of the FE examination? The choices are 80, 160, 320, or your choice. The correct answer is your choice. You decide how much time you're going to spend on each half of that test. You can split it at any point along the way. Once you close part one, however, you cannot go back to those questions and you have to start part two. And then part two will be a totally different test as far as you could see. Question number three. At what points can you view the summary sheet to see how you have been answering the questions? And this is true for each half of the exam. The choices are, once a test timer has started, after the halfway point for either part, after seeing every question for the first time, after answering every question for either part. The correct answer is, after the halfway point for each part. Question number four, at what points does the overall test time stop? Whenever you hit the pause button, at the start of the optional break, only when the entire exam is complete, or when you raise your hand and the proctor comes to assist you during the exam. And the correct answer is, at the start of the optional break. The only other time it stops is when you're completely done with the test. Question number five. What is the primary benefit of using the ABC method to study for the FE exam? To identify which areas you need to focus your study time on, to ensure that you have covered every subject that might appear on your exam, to reduce the amount of time you need to study, to be properly organized during your FE exam study time. This one gets a little bit gray, but the correct answer is A, to identify which areas you need to focus your study time on. It does help with all the other choices here, but that is not the primary benefit. It's to decide where to focus. Did you meet the time? Again, five questions, and you had an average of 2.909 minutes per each. Did you get all five questions answered within the 14 minutes and a half? Did you get at least three answers correct? Again, as I said in the previous reviews, three is 60%, and that's generally considered the passing score for the FE exam. Now, let's start today's topic the NCES FE Handbook. The first thing you should do is download the latest FE Handbook from NCES as a PDF. And at the time of this filming of this module, it was at version 9.5. You should also consider printing and binding a hard copy of the book. You can also purchase one of the hard copies from NCES. They'll give you a nice bound copy of it at a cost but you can just easily download it and print it out. This allows you to read sections when you're not near a computer. And 
at the time of the filming anyway of this video it can be brought in with you to the PE exam a few years down the road or next month if that's the way it works out for you okay here's the hard copy that I produced also notice that I as I mentioned before I put a nice binding on it I actually had staples do this for me with a clear cover in the front and a black vinyl backing as you can also see I've tabbed certain parts of it that I thought were insignificant that I wanted to be able to go back and review a second time right before I showed up for the test included in that I found the index with a tab and you'll see down in the description below a link to the Amazon Avery tabs that I got these from Now here's a listing of the actual handbook contents as shown actually in the front of the handbook. As you can see it has a couple of dozen subject areas that it's covered and I'll go over the ones that are important in a moment. The ones that I focused on I have highlighted here in red. Now these may differ for you but these were the primary ones that I was concerned about and I tabbed a couple of them. Also be aware of the mathematics section that is very important that is where you're going to get some of the formulas that you're going to need during the actual math problems the ones that are purely math you also may be interested in material science the structure of matter and possibly the electrical and computer engineering section although I included that one here because that's the one that I had to take I will cover each of these sections in a little bit of detail towards the rest of this presentation. The unit section, some of my suggestions. Read the small paragraphs at the top. There are lots of great suggestions that are presented there. You should place tabs on pages one and two of your hard copy since it will be used a lot. In the units, pay particular attention to the fundamental constants commit as much of the metric prefixes to memory as possible you're really not going to have a lot of time to be bouncing back to this but at least if you know it's on page one and two that'll help some of these are provided with your calculator so try to use the ones presented in your calculator as much as possible since the precision will be much greater there the conversion section as with the units many of these are embedded in the calculator and that includes either one of the top two calculators. Be ready to head to this page on special problems. I did once during my entire FE exam. The ethics section. These several pages are worth a casual read in your favorite reading spot. You will never have time to go to these pages during the actual exam, so there's no need to memorize the page numbers. You should not depend on these pages alone. Make sure to read and answer the questions in the PPI FE study manual. And if you have some time, see what your state has published. Hopefully they have a website where they show something. New York State had a very good section on this, which not only included a lot of details about the ethical rules, but it included a sample 20 question quiz and that quiz was used later on once you need to renew your license in order to get an additional CPE continuing education credit by getting I believe it was an 80 on that test it doesn't get submitted to them they expect you to print out the results and keep it for your record so you can try it as many times as you want until you get the score you need Make sure you fully understand what you can and cannot do as a practicing professional engineer and who is considered a PE. The math section. Knowing where the math section starts, in this case of version 9.5, page 27, is critical. There is no way I can imagine anyone remembering all those symbols and formulas. I'm also a little disappointed that they put the finite state machine information in that section so just keep that in mind you may need that later on but it's not really a math problem 
The complex number formulas are complex and knowing where they are is very important. One of the harder sections in math uh, that I found, at least a FE version of the math. You are best advised to know where you can find the law of sines and the law of cosine formulas. The trigonometric identities is ripe for interpretation and easily confused. So go through those. See how they present it. Sometimes the way the FE manual presents things is not the way you would see it in a regular textbook. Know where the formula for circles, cones, prisms, hyperbolas, tangent lines, parabolas all reside and how to quickly get to them. The formulas for derivatives and indefinite integrals are very confusing. You cannot leave it to test time to know how to use them at all. But at least know where they are. Page 34. Good luck with the progressions, Fourier and Laplace transforms. You either remember your dif differential equations or you do not. You need to know how to solve the matrix problems, very critical. There's just no excuse. Since the calculator, which I'll cover in the next video, is an amazing resource in answering those types of questions, and it does it quickly. For the FE exam, the questions you will see on the general difference equations, page 41, are very doable as long as you understand how to use the basic first order formula. However, the handbook is very little help with those types of problems. Probability and statistics, page 42, is a good one to remember. Set formulas are handy on that first page. These are the set theory formulas. De Morgan's associative and distributive laws know those formulas and laws. Most of the other formulas are extremely complex and tend to be tested infrequently, at least my experience and what I've heard from others. The most important pages are the tables shown on page 51 through 56, especially the unit normal distribution, which is on page 51, and the t-distribution tables on pages 51 and 52. In general, with the FE manual, tables in particular are the most useful aspect of it. So focus on the tables in general. Electrochemistry. The table on page 64 showing the standard oxidation potentials for corrosive reactions, that's a mouthful, is a critical resource for all of the ECFE exam disciplines. I know three people who took three different FE exams and they all had problems related to this, including me. Material science section. Starting on page 65 is an important section for mechanical and electrical FE exams. Make sure you know the formulas for charge, Q, capacitance, capital C, and resistivity, small italic T know those formulas. The most important page is the properties of metals on page 66. Study every column in that table carefully. Understand it. Engineering economics section. On page 36 starts one of the most important reasons for having the FE handbook available to you. It is a really nice to know that the base formulas are shown in the table at the top of the first page. However, trying to do almost any of those beyond the simple payment formula will just take too much time, time that you don't have. The tables are the key to success in engineering economics, which I will cover in a future video. Do, however, spend some time knowing the MACRS. I'll leave it for you to look that up. The most important part of this section is the tables, as I said. They start on page 139 and they end on page 143 of, again, version 9.5. My lesson on engineering economics will focus on how to use those tables to solve the majority of the problems you will see on this test regarding engineering economics. Electrical and computers. I included a slide for this section and obviously talking about it here because I took the electrical and computer exam. However, 
you should gain extreme knowledge of any similar sections that you know will be on your exam. Just about every FE exam has different sections in his handbook that are important. This particular one was important for my test. You need to commit the starting page of this section or whatever section it is for you to memory. There are key formulas here. I burned page 200 into my memory after using it so often. Although it was actually page 205 that was close enough. For me those 28 pages were used in over one-third of the problems that I encountered. Since it is mostly for one test I won't go over the subsections on this video. But I could do that in future versions of the videos if you're interested in it. Just let me know in the comments. Your test also may have more than one of these sections that you need to remember. Sorry about that. The index. If you have a hard copy of the FE reference manual, put a highly visible tab on the bottom of the first page. In my case, page 251 of version 9.5. I believe that I showed you that a few minutes ago when I showed you my hard copy manual. Unfortunately the index leaves a lot out so don't waste too much time trying to find different word combinations. They just aren't that many of those. If you find it in first look go for it. If not don't waste the time. Other things to know. Use the PDF version of this manual as much as possible during your study and practice sessions. On every problem you should look through it because chances are there's something in the book that might help and you need to know that during the test. I place the color tabs on my hard copy. Always remember that what you see during the actual test will have much smaller fonts than what you have probably on your computer. Anyway, I wish you all the best. The next video that I'm going to cover in this series is the calculator. Hopefully you got something out of today's video covering part four of the FE preparation program. If you got something that you felt was valuable I'd really appreciate it if you could subscribe to my channel. You're going to see a little copy of my head pop up here in a moment. Just go ahead and click on that and you can subscribe. It doesn't cost anything and you won't be bothered unless you pick to get notifications. Thank you for viewing my video and I hope to see you next time. Take care.